Bob, let's switch gears, talk about another big tech name uh, in the news today. That's Apple. Moment Apple fans have been waiting for, Bob. Those new iPhones do hit store shelves. Um, of course, the key question remains, Bob, you know, do, does the iPhone 16 series, does it jumpstart this meaningful iPhone upgrade um, cycle, Bob, in 2025? What do you think? I've said for a long time, I don't think it's going to, and we're already seeing the initial results of that, right? I mean, look, there's a couple of problems we have with the iPhone. One of them is the iPhone 16 looks like the 15, looks like the 14, looks like the 13. I mean, you know, it's getting a little old in the tooth. I mean, I was kind of joking with some folks. I was at the launch event on Monday and I had just gotten the new Google Pixel Fold. I said, I've got the coolest phone in the whole building. <laughs> it was, you know, because you've got this cool foldable design. And, and people are getting, I think, a little tired of this, this iPhone design. Then, of course, there's the Apple intelligence features. They're not shipping yet. They will be shipping, but they're not exactly knocking people out. Now, to be fair, this is not an Apple-only problem, right? We've seen some challenges when uh, Microsoft did Copilot plus PCs, oh, by the way, in conjunction with Qualcomm, and some of the AI features there weren't knocking a lot of consumers out. So we're very much in the early days of AI, a lot of questions by consumers around the benefits there, a lot more, I think, opportunity for the business side, and Apple hasn't done a lot uh, to talk about Apple intelligence for business purposes. So I, I think there's some fundamental challenges right now. I'm still a big believer in AI down the long in the you know in the long run to be clear. But right now from a consumer focused perspective, which is what a lot of the initial Apple sales are typically targeted at, it's just not hitting home. And plus I can't get them. And then the last piece, just to add yet another a little twist to it, is because Apple chose to put all the same processors inside both the Pro, Pro Max, and the standard iPhone, all of a sudden it's like the standard iPhone is a better deal in terms of you get all the capabilities to run AI features and all this kind of stuff without needing the Pro and the Pro Max. And so that's also a big shift. So that's a challenge because now that moves the overall average selling price of iPhones down if, if this continues. I, admittedly, come on, it's one week, right? I mean, let's give it some time and see what happens. But it does reflect to me the fact that you know, Apple made this conscientious, this conscientious decision to have all the iPhones support AI, which, again, in the long run, is probably a good thing, but it's creating this little blip that we're seeing right now. What about, Bob, you know, I, I talked to uh, Gene Munster, and he takes the other side of that trade. And, and you know Gene, longtime Apple analyst. Yes, and, and, I know. And he says, um, you know, basically just comes down to the the hundreds of millions of iPhones out there that are at least three years old. By Gene's math, it's roughly 700 million. And he just thinks, listen, that's a lot of people who are gonna be ready to upgrade. They're gonna, they're gonna like that faster chip. They're gonna like the, you know, the larger displays and the pros, the upgraded camera. What, what is your response to that, Bob? Well, the exact same thing happened last year, right? I mean, Apple had the same number of three-year-old phones in theory then, and we saw a modest upgrade cycle. I think what Gene was counting on was that the Apple intelligence would in fact trigger what they call the super cycle, a bigger upgrade than normal. But in point of fact, what we have seen over time, and it's not just Apple, it's everybody, the smartphone business has stalled and people are holding on to smartphones longer because again, they haven't really changed. I don't, you know, a lot of people are saying, hey, I just don't see enough of a difference to need the upgrade. The hope was that these AI features from Apple would be that trigger for change, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen for a while. So as a result, we're kind of where we have been for the last few years, which is that means a certain number of people are in fact going to upgrade their iPhones, but there's not as, as compelling a major reason to change. And that's the part that I think that got missed and was over expected by, by Gene and some others. Bob, thanks for rolling with everything. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you. You're welcome.